Don't go anywhere. This is Ask an Autism Mom. Hi, everyone. I'm Jen Eggert of Ask an Autism Mom Live from La with Lackey Kid. And you can join me every Monday to meet other parents, share tips, and learn or share share insights and learn new tips. Sorry. On today's show, I have my husband, David, and he's already throwing me off. So it's going to be interesting today. Um, like I said, today's show will be extra special because I am sharing it with my husband who has been on this journey of being an autism parent with me from day one. So it's going to be interesting. We're going to get his point of view and how he adjusted and dealt with the diagnosis of our daughter, Riley. If you know someone who is interested in today's show, please share our show now or tag them on the timeline. So, sorry. Why is that showing? Okay. So please, again, share now or tag them in the comments below. I want to welcome those of you watching live on Facebook or listening on podcasts or iTunes or YouTube. If you want to get alerts to join us live and ask questions live, you can visit lackeykid.com forward slash live. Hi, everybody, and good morning. I see Angela. I know Angela's here. She has been laughing at me all week waiting to see if my jokes her husband is going to be a nut or not. Hi, Angela. Happy you're here. So again, this is my husband, David, and we're here to talk about how diagnosis with Riley and how he supports me as an autism parent, how I support him, and to get a dad's perspective. Hi, Crystal, Meg, Janina. Hi, everybody. I'm so happy you're here. Again, I can't wait to share today's show with you. <laughs> if you're just joining us, you're listening to Ask an Autism Mom Live, and we're having a special, interesting episode as I have David, my husband, who's, well, I want to say excited, but we shall see. Um, but before I start, I want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor, Lackey Kid, who makes one of our favorite toys, which is the Marble Fidget Maze. You simply work the marble through the maze with your fingers. It's great for OT. It's great for concentration. It's even great for car rides, doctor's office, because it can fold really small. It can fit in a pocket, and it's wonderful to have with you. Oh, Angela, yes, he keeps things interesting. Hi, Mom. Say hi to Mom. Hi, Mom. Sorry, my mom is watching because she wants to see this guy on camera. Now, if you're just joining us, you're listening to Ask an Autism Mom Live, and we're here with my special guest, um, my husband, David, who is going to kind of give his perspective on being an autism dad. So, David, can you please introduce yourself? Absolutely. So, my name's David, obviously, as Jen's mentioned a few times. Um, been dealing with this for about six years now. Uh, been with Riley's diagnosis for six years, going on seven. You know, it's uh, been an interesting journey. Work a lot, unfortunately. Um, so, I'm very blessed to have a awesome wife who is able to handle a lot of the issues. Now... How did you come to terms with Riley's diagnosis and did it take time for you to process and deal with in your own mind? When we finally got the diagnosis, it's actually kind of a relief um, being that we've, we had fought for many years as we, we knew, we knew there was an issue. We knew something wasn't, wasn't quite right. Um, not that there's anything wrong with Riley. We just knew she wasn't, she was, she was different. She was herself. Uh, so when we finally got the diagnosis, it was actually a relief. It, it wasn't so much, you know, a, a burden or a, a, a negative, um, you know, and it, it really didn't take any time to, to process it because we've been fighting for her for, for years. You know, so we started when she was about 16 months old, 
that's when we re recognize the first signs of issues. And it was just about four years old when she was finally given a formal diagnosis. So it actually, it was, it was easy to deal with for us. Now, how do you support your wife when her schedule gets overwhelming? I usually work more then. <laughs> uh, I, being a supervisor for my company, it, it allows me a lot of freedom where if I do notice that it is getting a little burdensome, and I try to, I try to be home a little bit more, uh, for the last six years, you know, we, we, we've dealt with me traveling off and on, uh, which I, I've been thankful that to be allowed. Um, but here, here lately it's, it's, she's needed me a little bit more, which is understandable. The, kid, the kids are getting older and, uh, their demands get a little more uh, strenuous, so it's just making myself more available to to Jen when when that time's needed. And you also like today you spend time where we just concentrate on the two of us and providing the care and attention that we need to give each other as a husband and wife. Correct. I, you know, when you're dealing with the, with the kids, and especially Riley, with when she's having her meltdowns and. It, it, it can be a burden at times. It can be overwhelming, not a burden. No, it's overwhelming at times. Um, so today I actually took the day off uh, and had the pleasure of getting the kids off to school and then going out with the wife and just enjoying adult time. And, and that's the biggest thing is when you when you do have a special needs child is you can't forget about about the person that you're with. And, and that's, that's very hard because a, a lot of your attention's on that one child. Um, and, and it works the same with your other kids. You can't just focus on one kid. Um, it, it, you have to take care of each other. Otherwise, it, it, it goes downhill very quick. Now, with family life and your hectic work schedule, how do you make time for yourself? <laughs> Anybody who has spoken to my wife will know I am a gamer. Uh, that's... Uh, you have to take time for you. You have to make time for each other. You have to make time for the kids. But if you don't take care of yourself and you don't, you don't just take a few minutes, a, a few hours here and there, you, you kind of lose your mind. Uh, so for me, it's I'll come home, long, hard day. You know, kids are acting okay. I'll get on my game and I'll just disappear for a few hours, you know, and, and sometimes you just have to do that. Uh, there's nights where I come home and I can tell Jen's just extremely stressed out. It's been a brutal day for her. Um, so those are the days where I come home, get whatever work I have completed. And then, Hey, go to the bedroom, just watch some Netflix, relax, do whatever you're going to do. Just take some time. You know, you have to make time for yourselves. Now, do you find that people understand Riley's unique needs? Riley, as everyone knows, is almost seven. And she is extremely verbal to the point where we get told quite often to ask our daughter to not use certain words because they're too complex for her classmates. So her issues are a little bit unique in the sense where we have to adjust her sometimes to be at their level, both because she's delayed in some areas and because she's extremely advanced in others. That's difficult. Some, some individuals who, who can recognize the tendencies and the, the, the happenings when, when she does have something going on that, that does show her diagnosis um they're they're easy to spot then um but a lot of most people we talk to you know when we're talking and you know eventually we bring up the autism and how riley's diagnosed and it's we get well i would have never assumed that you know because she's such a she's such a good kid so i would say probably about 75 percent of the time no you know they they really don't understand because well a lot of times when we go out she knows hey we have to behave appropriate in public and she, she does a great job of conducting herself now, you know, and, and Riley, each child with autism is different. Um, you know, she, she has a lot of control, uh, where, where others don't. Uh, so she knows kind of what we expect. That does not mean that we don't go out in the public and have a meltdown or 
you know, throw a fit because she wants this. And once she gets that mind fixed, that's it. It's done. <laughs> She's going to continue on. Um, but for the most part, you know, it, it, it is, it is uh, kind of shocking to a lot of individuals when they do find out that she has a special needs child. Now, I remember a funny story from a few years ago. He was traveling for work and I had to bring the kids to the doctors. They just so happened to be needing immunizations. Now, this poor young nurse walks into the room and Riley was doing really well. She was focused. She was listening to the doctor whom she really loves. She has a connection, really great connection with our doctor. Well, the nurse comes in. I wrap my arms around Riley and Riley gets poked in the arm. She turns to the nurse and gives her a lecture on how that is being mean to children and how adults cannot be mean to children. And she was going to call her daddy and tell him that adults can't be mean to children. And this lady was very, very mean to her. Our daughter doesn't, her meltdowns tend to start with her giving this tirade on an issue. The other day we had a tirade on the commercials on TV because all the restaurant commercials say <laughs> limited only to our restaurant or something like that. And that's really annoying to her in her words. And it's not fair because everything's special edition and limited to, and it doesn't make it special anymore. So we really hear these tirades, which are fun but they can really wear on you when the same tirade goes on for four, five hours and she's still going. And there's no stopping her, unfortunately. I mean, the only thing that's going to stop her is once her eyes close, mm -hmm. you know, and then she wakes up in a, in a, in a different mood the next day and you just never know. Uh, and that's, that's the thing with her, with, uh, with Riley, at least you just, you got to let it run its course and you know, it, the biggest thing is for us, you know, when, when we do have that, that rare meltdown in public, you know, you, you get the dirty looks and there's nothing we, you, that you can do. It, you got to let it run its course and, you know, it's something that we deal with, unfortunately. <laughs> now, I just want to say, you guys are talking about what perspective and his perspective. When Riley was approximately two years old, we were told it was SPD first, sensory processing disorder. And yes, he struggled with it. We both did. But the first time I think I finally realized it was going to be okay, Dave and I went for a car ride and the children were with his mother. And he brings me to a tattoo shop. And he spoke to the woman and he ended up getting tattooed on his back the saying do you want to say it yeah it, it says i can't change my daughter for the world but i can change the world for my daughter you know it, it when i saw that it really uh really hit home because i knew hey my daughter's my daughter she's uh definitely unique uh she is herself and i would never change anything about her to to make her conform or you know fit into what people deem as normal, you know, it, I, I will do everything I can in my power to make that, make the world much a better place for her. Um, so that, that, when I saw that, I, I knew that was the next tattoo. Unfortunately, that's my collection. <laughs> and for us, I've spoken before about how we're not the traditional autism family. He discovered Riley had a love of what she called princesses. And it was actually beauty pageants. And I've explained a little bit about how when he realized she wanted to be in a beauty pageant, this man became pageant dad. He goes to pageants. He makes sure her hair looks good. Her makeup looks good. Her, he fluffs I can't, I her can't dress. do it, but I make sure it's appropriate at least. <laughs> so he really pushes for what makes Riley happy. And I think that's one of the key things in any parent is the goal of having not only a happy child, but a happy family, a happy, the, everyone in the family has to be happy and content or nobody is. Now, Dave, how has Riley's diagnosis changed your pers perceptive, perspective on autism 
And what were your feelings on this? You know, I was always raised. It, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter what issues or diagnosis or what someone's dealing with in life. Um, we're all humans. You know, you treat everybody the same. Um, and one of the biggest things that, that I, I preach to, to my guys at work is I'm going to treat, treat the janitor just as good as the CEO. That's one thing that goes around a lot. And I love that saying because you just, you, you treat everybody the same, you know, and dealing with the diagnosis and actually having the, the confirmation that we had seeked, it, it just showed, you know, that no matter what, it, no matter what anybody's been diagnosed with or dealt with or going through we're all human inside we all just want the, that basic basic instinct of nurture and care you know love um treat everybody the same it doesn't shouldn't matter so that's that's the biggest thing um and it it just makes me uh realize even more how true those those words are um and, and it, it, it forces me to strive to treat every person I come in contact with, with the same dignity, same respect as uh, I would want for my, my kids and my wife and, as, as well. Now I'm going to go to viewer questions. If you have any questions, type them in the comments now. I don't think I warned them that I was doing viewer questions. So this is gonna be interesting. Now, if you guys give me a minute, I'm going to scroll through questions that were asked while we were talking. Um, Jasmine wants to know, do you have any guy friends that are able to relate as parents or any other fathers that are in similar situations as we are? No, uh, you know, this is something that is new to me, new to, uh, new to us. And I, I'm very much a loner myself. I, I'm, I, I could be recluse by myself for the next 12 months. I'd be happy, you know, so I, I kind of just take it in stride and, and deal with it. Um, you know, unfortunately, I have not met too many uh, fathers in my situation uh, or, you know, who's who's willing to talk about it. We also live in a very tiny community where it's not, you don't see a lot for, uh, we don't have autism society here. We don't have any actual support programs and networks in our area. So finding locals who understand us is very difficult. Um, when Riley was in preschool, there were six children in her class. Only three of them had autism. And unfortunately, they were both little boys with single moms. So they don't quite understand David's side of things. Um, I agree, Gretchen. A lot of people question the diagnosis. Dave and I get questioned constantly. We hear the famous line that drives me nuts. She doesn't look autistic. <laughs> um, as you can see, Dave, Dave just laughs when he, we hear that because what does autism look like? That's pretty much what I ask. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, so what should she look like then? I mean, it, that right there absolutely floors me. It, it, you know, I, I'm very easygoing, very laid back. I, I enjoy, uh, I, I enjoy just having fun in life. You know, it, it's too short to, to live tense and stressed and care about too much. Um, and that is one thing that that will get under my skin pretty quick because th there's just so much mis misinformation on autism. And not only autism, but so many other disabilities out there. But definitely, that is, uh, that's the one thing that definitely uh, I laugh at. And then it kind of just strikes a nerve. <laughs> and Dave and I come from a background I've spoken in the past about. I was the sister of a special needs person who was obviously special needs. So Dave kind of came into my life and my sister's life. And he saw that there was a lot of negativity towards people who were clearly visibly disabled. And there's kind of like this mindset in your head, well, she's not visibly disabled, maybe we'll get it easier. But it's not. Because then you have people who look at you for the famous, your child's melting down in public. Yes, we can't help her melting down in public. We can only safeguard against her getting hurt 
and hurting anyone else, which Riley is only physically destructive towards herself. And so Jessica, I agree with you, Jessica. Riley was a struggle as a baby. She didn't sleep. I would tell him every night at 10 o'clock when I should have been going to bed, I don't want to go to bed. I don't want to go to bed because the minute I close my eyes, she will wake up and stay up till four, five, six in the morning. So it was really, really hard as a baby. But as she grew up, she got better. And now again, Jessica, Riley is seven in less than a month, which I don't want to admit. And she's getting better. I think as they get older, they kind of come into themselves and find a level within themselves that makes them feel better and easier to deal with. That is definitely something that, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, how old she gets uh the about about a month ago actually i had a uh mother come running by me at, at work and you know she she looked like she was just distraught and i'm like everything okay ma'am you know i'm in the south it's ma'am yes sir yes ma'am so i'm like everything okay ma'am and she's like no i can't find my daughter and the the realism the the emotion that hit me and i'm starting to get teary-eyed just thinking about it again because thinking about if that was my daughter and Riley and what, what would happen? Like it, it really scared me, I, you know, and I thankfully I had one of my coworkers with me at the time. So we, the three of us split, and we were able to locate the child who was actually on the main road of a small town, but it, it, it's vehicles are still traveling quite, quite a rapid speed. You know, she was four years old. She took off from her mother. And, you know, when we finally, when, when we found her, you know, I broke down in tears because, just the thought of you know Riley and taking off and the the, the issues we dealt with. Now she th thankfully had is starting to not be in that mindset as often, but she still has her times where she wants to just go. And if we're not careful, she she'll be gone in a second. So that that's definitely something that is you will never lose that fear. I agree, and don't forget um, we. <laughs> do partner up with culture city and culture city does do a life blocks program where you can get gps trackers for the price of shipping and it has other things in the box but you can get some gps trackers to keep your child safe because the thought of where's my child is terrifying i mean you see my husband he's a 30 something year old man who's in tears because he was so scared now, Angela, I agree. Um, journaling is amazing for our kids to start learning how to deal with themselves. And Riley may only be in first grade, but one of her favorite things to do lately is write. So we went today to Costco and they had these big packs of pens on sale. I can't remember how much stuff was in there, but it was on clearance for $5. And he's like, okay, she gets new pens tonight. So I agree. If your child has a love or an affinity for something, really bring that forward. Dave and I are constantly bringing forward everything we can to give her a better life and to make her happy. So I'm going to jump in on okay. Alicia. So your daughter gets upset if things are out of place out of the store. <laughs> Riley has been diagnosed with OCD since she was 18 months old. Um, it was that noticeable at, at a very young age that everything has a place, whether we're at home in a store, you know, driving in the car, it, it has to be there. You know, that is, that is one of the big things for Riley is if it's not in place, there's a meltdown is going to ensue very soon. <laughs> so we actually have um, <laughs> an amazing male pharmacist up the road at the pharmacy we use. And he knows that if that front shelf right beside the till is not perfect, she will sit there and make it perfect. And he has gotten to the point where he thanks her and he says that she's his best little stalker because he understands. So trust me, we get it. She will make us sit there and wait for 10 minutes for her to make sure that shelf is perfect and the lines have to be 
adjusted and yeah. so we understand completely. I'm just reading through. I agree. A lot of you have the expectations of things have to be where they want. Oh, I like that saying, Melissa. Under her Facebook profile, she has a favorite saying called autism is my child's world and is now mine. I really like that. that. That is awesome. That is awesome. Thank you to everyone for sharing and liking our show. Give Dave some likes. I know he was nervous to get on here for the first time. Second day on camera in two days. Uh, <laughs> second time on camera in two days. I'm not a camera guy. So it definitely is uh, definitely is tough, um, especially when you're when you're discussing your child with with a lot of random strangers to me. Obviously, Jen knows a lot of y'all, but to me, you know, random strangers. And when you're when you're talking opening up and discussing what you've dealt with, that's always a tough thing. Um, and uh, you know, it, it's uh, I'm glad that I could share some insight. And, and the big thing I want to just make sure everybody understands, you know. It, we may not have talked about something that your child's going through, but that doesn't make it any different. You know, we're, we're all up against the same battles. We're all facing the, the same, the same fight. Um, at the end of the day, as long as we come out ahead, that's all that matters as parents. You know, our kids are safe. They're fed. They got a roof over their head. We're, we're doing our jobs. Now, Chris, I want to address your um, comment about when you see other autistic kids in public, your husband asks, is camera going to be like that? You're still very new to diagnosis. You're still very new to dealing with this. And I know it's hard. I think we question that a lot ourselves when she was little, especially being told, Riley will never talk. So we went back and forth to ourselves. Is she going to be stuck in her own world, in her own head? She's still in her own world. And, and she still has days where she's in her own head as well. You know, um, but the, the, the big thing w with autism, that child's going to be whoever they, they want, whoever they're going to be. There's no change in them. They are exactly who they said they're going to be, you know, uh, and that's that's the the unique part about autism is many other diagnoses. You can put each each individual in, into into a set criteria with autism. It, there's just so much variance and unknown that it, it really is a unique, you know, medical diagnosis. Um, because no two, no two autistic children will ever be the same. Now, I know folks that we're running close to the end of the show. I am going to stay on live to help finish answering your questions because it is a rare opportunity that we have a dad willing to talk. Um, Melissa wants to know, Dave, how would you help other dads dealing with a diagnosis of autism? The, that's tough. Um, because as I said, I have not had many interactions with other dads. Um, you know, that's, that is a sad reality of this day and age is, uh, there's too many fathers that are not around, um, or, or play the weekend week warrior. Um, for me, it, it would, it would have to be just understand that you're going to deal with this. You're going to have to confront it. You, you can run and, and, you know, be a naysayer and my child's perfect. There's nothing wrong. And, and there is nothing wrong with an autistic child. They are who they are. Um, it, you know, but learning and you know, studying up on what what a, what an autistic individual is going through really opens up your eyes, um, you know, and just being honest about what your child deals with, being truthful. Um, and, and I'm kind of the same way, you know, and I, I reference work a lot because I work a ton of hours, but I tell my guys the same thing, you, you know, I'm not going to sit here and sugarcoat nothing. I'm going to be very honest and blunt and unfortunately it gets me in trouble sometimes, but it is, it is who I am. You know, I'm, I'm going to tell those, those parents, you know, exactly what we went through. Um, you know, and, and I'm going to be very clear that that's not going to be your story. Your story is going to be your story. My story is going to be my story. And the next individual is going to be their story. And, and like I said, that's the beautiful thing about autism is there's just no cookie cutter case. There's no, no, no identical issues for every, every child. Now, Jason, our founder has said that 
Um, hi, David. Being an autism dad is definitely tough. There is a lot of groups of autism moms, but not many for dads. I agree. There's so much support for us moms, but there's not a lot for dads. I honestly have never even went out. And that's, I, I can tell you why that is. Us guys, we're prideful. We can, we're, we're supposed to carry the burden of our family, of work, of, you know, ourselves inside you know guys do not we don't we don't we don't go out looking for help we don't go out looking for the support that the woman in our lives will you know they 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 crave that support and they they need each other um whereas you know guys we're we're one-minded most most of the time i'm not saying every guy but a vast majority of us we're not gonna seek out help or you know assistance we're going to, at least for me, I'm going to go head on. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to study up on it. And then I'm going to support my wife. <laughs> so that, that would be that I can, that, that is a big cause of that. Um, I'm sure I'm, I know there's groups out there, but they are few and far between. Now, Chastity, I just want to let you know that you're saying your husband wants to find a group. Our group on Facebook is for dads as well. We do have one prominent dad in our group, Jason, who would, he'll be there. Um, like he said, he is completely open to talking to other dads, to supporting other dads as well. Um, how do you react to bullies and Riley getting bullied? <laughs> Dave and I have a different perspective on bullies. So this is going to be interesting. So I can, I, I will tell you, you know, growing up, um, I, I was the one bullied for basically from kindergarten till about 10th grade. Um, so bullying, I have absolutely no use for, um, you know, I, I, I have a different viewpoint with, uh, as Jen said, because I don't, I do not want my kids taking that mental abuse for that long. You know, I suffered in silence and, and bottled it up. And that, you know, that is, that is a big issue in the world today. Not just, not just one country, the world, you know, um, it, it really affects someone's uh, mental well-being when they're bullied for any length of time. Uh, you know, <laughs> My, my theory is, hey, you know, don't do not start nothing, but we, we better finish, you know, and, and it's not it's not always the right perspective. But, you know, I expect my kids and I, 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 I allow them to stand up for themselves and and, you know, not to not to be abused mentally. Um, unfortunately, you know, mental abuse can be far worse than physical abuse. Um, as a victim of bullying for so long, that's killed all self-esteem. Even to this day, it, it affects me mentally. Um, you know, I had a demonstration yesterday in front of about 200 individuals where I just stood there like this, you know, and here I am supposed to be in the spotlight. Uh, you know, and I'm starting to work my way out of my shell, but after dealing with it for 12 years, 10, 11, 12 years, that, that's a very hard thing to overcome. So I, 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 I let my kids know, you stand up for yourself. Don't you dare bully anybody because of what I've been through. Um, but stand up for yourself. Don't, don't just sit there and sit back. And unfortunately with Riley, that's hard because she, she, she doesn't want to disappoint anybody. You know, she mm -hmm. wants everybody to be happy and be loving to her. And for her, that's a very hard thing to stand up for herself, which I definitely understand. Um, so that's kind of my stance on bullying. Now, Jen, you know, she, she wants the adults to handle it and, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, unfortunately it, today's society it usually gets brushed under the rug. And that's why I tell my kids to stand up for themselves. <laughs> now, <clears throat> Chris wants to know, do you have any concerns for Riley's future? There's always concerns. It, it doesn't matter. You know, she, she could be getting straight A's in school and I mean, just be the most ideal student, but there's always going to be a concern. There's always going to be a worry about what's going to happen in five years and in 15 years and 20 years for my daughter, what's going to happen when I'm not here for my daughter. 
you know, that, that will never leave my mind. Um, you know, now we've been blessed where, you know, she was able to get into a, a mainstream classroom and really show that, Hey, autism, autism isn't, it isn't a disability. It can be in certain situations, but it doesn't define them. It doesn't mean that, Hey, you're autistic. You're set for this in life. You're not going to be able to do that or this. Um, you know, and, and so she's, she's exceeded and I, I'm very thankful because she's like her father. You tell me if I'm not going to do something, I'm going to prove you wrong and then yeah. do it 10 times better. <laughs> and, and, you know, we were told she would never talk. She has a vocabulary of a teenager at this point. Um, and, and that's documented by school, you know, where, like Jen said earlier in the show, we get asked, Hey, she's using words. That's not appropriate for her age level. We, we got to kind of rein that back a little bit. And, and you just laugh because it's like, well, I can't help what she says. <laughs> and Riley's newest thing is um, about a week ago, she announced that her new goal is to learn one new big word a day. <laughs> so it's really hard when she's asking us every day for a big word, which we've so far been able to provide. But then she tries to use it in school and they don't understand so then the teacher calls me or writes me notes. It it gets interesting. Obviously, the teacher understands because she's using the proper context. But her classmates at her at her age level is too far above their heads, you know. And, and that's that's the one thing you know that I find uh, with a lot of autistic children. There's one thing that you can find in their life that they that is their focus. You know, Riley is words. She loves words. Um, you know, I, I've met other autistic children where it's vehicles or drawing and they are, they are the best of the best at what they focus on. You know, they got that one trait that is just, it blows your mind away how talented they are. Um, you know, they may lack in other areas of, of their social development, but you, you hit that one spot and you, you get them to open up it's over. They will not stop talking about it. They will not stop showing you what they can do, you know, and, and it's, it's just a true love from them. Um, Shannon, I just want to tell you, come on into group after the show and we will discuss stranger danger and elopement that takes it's that's going to take its own time and <laughs> work on working on that. Thank you to everyone for thanking Dave and I for doing this today to Kim Shenard lamb. I love you too. And I didn't know you knew I did this. Sorry. <laughs> I just discovered that my cousin found me on Facebook and I didn't know she knew about this. <laughs> Interesting. So I want to thank everyone for watching and viewing. And Mary Ellen, I agree. Mary Ellen likes to remind people that at six, there was a child with severe autism and now he's independent and fully functioning as an adult so don't close yourself down always stay open to every possibility of the future uh, you know and in, in, in that regard i've i've learned you know uh like i said when, when riley's diagnosed that she would never be verbal she might have very simple grunts or communication skills i learned i will never never box my child into a uh, corner and say, you will never do this because as soon as you do, you're, you're limiting your child's ability um, and their, their ability to uh, ju just grow. You know, you, you give them a chance, they may fail a thousand times, but as soon as they get it that one time, they're good. Well, how many times was the light bulb created and it failed? Yeah. the airplane everything failed everyone failed before they succeeded now angela wrote a um statement that i am in love with don't tell me the sky is the limit when there are footsteps on the moon that is awesome i really like that let me just continue flipping through i'm going to have to start um wrapping up the show soon if any of you have questions that were not asked Jump in group. I will ask for David to answer in group later tonight. I know we are going to be busy shortly after the show. Riley is obsessed with Halloween. So we, <laughs> daddy needs to drive her all around town tonight for Halloween. I think we may be going out of town. Jen doesn't realize that though yet. Oh, 
No, Jen didn't know that she was going to another town tonight. That's the perks of being a supervisor in the construction industry where knowing where all the good neighborhoods are. <laughs> so apparently we're going out after. Um, I want to thank you all. How do you discipline your daughter? Ah, thank you. I've been waiting for this question. How do you discipline Riley? And don't tell me. Well. He has two ways. It's either too soft or hard so this is interesting so again they have that one thing that they love for riley it's you know and this is pretty much any child nowadays the phone and the tablet you know those are her two go to i don't want to talk to you i'm gonna get on this and just ignore the world so that's the first thing she's gonna lose especially if if it's a if it's ex an extreme case where what she did was just unbelievably acceptable then it's gonna be gone for a couple days um she just got her phone back after a three-day grounding i can't remember at this time what she did oh she was giving her phone to her brother who was, uh, grounded. Who was grounded from the phone for three months for completely inappropriate uh material um but she would unlock her phone get her phone unlocked by me or jen go to her brother say hey you give me this i'll let you use my phone my child's she, she's she's a future politician you know um blackmail is her is her tactics i guess um so i we were made aware of this and she lost her phone for for a few days you know and with her a few days that's that's a lifetime um but you know it, you you, you want to get mad you want to just pull your hair out and scream and there's times where we all have that breakdown where we lose control of ourselves and as soon as that happens you realize wait a minute it, it doesn't do any good because now now it's 10 times worse you know so i and i'll you know i'm a big guy you know i'm scary to most individuals for some odd reason you know i can get loud i can i can get mean but it doesn't get me anywhere with her, you know, um, you just, you find what really makes them think about their actions. Um, other than that, it could be, you know, five minutes in a room alone, which that's, you know, about a lifetime sentence for her, uh, because they, I mean, she's just going to be kicking and screaming and yelling and, and it, all it is is five minutes, but to her, she just got a life sentence. <laughs> Um, Chastity, I want you to post in group. We would love to support you and help you deal with the new diagnosis and where to go from here. Um, do you offer Jen to help other autistic parents? <laughs> so I, I, I would say no, but that would be a lie. Um, <laughs> You know, I don't sit here and say, oh, well, my wife's autistic, it's autistic mother. She's an expert on this because we've been through it. I let them know, hey, you know, we have an autistic child ourselves. You know, Jen does run an autism support group on Facebook. Um, you know, get a hold of her, kind of just talk with her. Because I do know when you first get that diagnosis, and it, it, it doesn't matter if you were prepared for it or not, there's still just that slap in the face of reality. And what are you going to do next? So, you know, and I, that's the one thing I'm, I, I love about Jen is she does so much research and then she comes and tells me, which helps me out. Um, so, you know, just having someone, you know, to talk to, like I said, guys, we're not going to go for that support. Jen's been my support pillar. You know, she gives me the information when I need it. Okay. So why is she doing this? Oh, well, blah, 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 blah. You know, she already knows why, because she's done the research on that. Um, so, uh, yes, I do, I do offer Jen's, uh, advice, um, which that's kind of her job now. So <laughs> okay. now, unfortunately we have to end the show for today. Um, I want to thank everyone for coming and watching again, join us in group at luckykid.com forward slash group. We would love your support. David, sorry, he's blowing on me. I told you guys, I never know what to expect when this man is standing She's with me. She's probably just happy I did not like her today. Yes. Um, 
Everyone laughs because Riley licks people when she's trying to get a sense of you. And she gets that from her father. Um, I want to thank all of you again. I love Mary Ellen's statement that she just put. You can't know what their potential is until you push them out of their comfort zone. I struggle with this. I want to pull her in <laughs> and keep her safe. And he's constantly telling me, let her try it. Let her go. The, like Jen mentioned earlier with the uh, pageants, you know, when I found out that's what she wanted to do, I'm like, look, I'm against the child pageants. I'm against the whole glam glitter. That's no, I don't think it's right. When I found out that's what she wanted to do, okay, we'll give it a shot. If you you enjoy it, you enjoy it. What? So be it, you know. And I, I, honestly, that first passion she did, and none of the judges knew about her. They did not know about her diagnosis. Um, when she won the best eyes, which for her age group meant she made, made the most eye contact with the judges. Got that one. That was such a bittersweet moment. Like there, there's been a lot of moments doing pageants. Uh, you know, the last one where she came in second place overall in multiple age groups, you know, seeing her succeed. The people's choice and, where they chose her. Yeah, the, the, she won the people's choice award where her, her peers said, you know, she had the most heart. She, she was the most loving, the most caring, you know, just little stuff that had we just said, well, no, Riley, you're autistic. It's not a good idea. It, you know, you would never know. So I, I push my kids. I want them to try a lot of stuff. I want them to fail in life. You know, too many, too many parents nowadays are afraid of failure. The only way to learn is through failure. You know, you, you, you do something, you mess it up. You're not going to make that same mistake twice. Um, and that's, that's why I, I push my, my children to fail in life. They're going to mess up. They're going to make mistakes. They're going to learn. They're going to grow. That's how you become a uh, responsible adult. <laughs> I agree. Now, I want to thank you all. Unfortunately, Chris, he can't come on monthly. His work schedule is so crazy. We have actually been planning this show for about a month and a half since the idea came up. But remember, we always have Jason, who is an autism dad and is always willing to talk. Um, maybe Jason and I will work on a show about that and with another autism dad and again if you have an autism dad who wants to join the show and talk about their perspective i bet you we would all appreciate it so just let myself know thank you all for coming i appreciate it greatly i'm jen eggert and you can join me live every monday at 1 p.m eastern for more parenting tips. And you can always join our support group at lackeykid.com forward slash group. So thank you. Have a great day. And remember, every child brings good luck.